Today I want to talk about subpoenas, because the house is currently throwing them out like candy on Halloween. Bar won't show up to testify? Here's your subpoena. Don't have the full Mueller report? Subpoena. Want to get Trump's financial information? Maybe file a Freedom of Information request. Heck no, it's Subpoena City USA, population U. It's legitimately hard to keep track of all these subpoenas. I mean, Democrats are making it rain subpoenas right now. Specifically, Democrats have issued more than 100 subpoenas and requests to anyone with even the most tangential connection to the president. Don't worry though, Trump has vowed to fight all subpoenas, which makes this battle that much more epic. A fight over the idea of what a subpoena even is. And don't worry, I'll get to that. You know how sometimes when you say a word too many times it begins to lose all meaning? Well, this intro is starting to feel that way. I think I've said the word subpoena more times than the word is. So let's jump right in. Those investigations are already running into stiff resistance at the White House, where Trump's legal team is working to block subpoenas on everything from Trump's tax returns to White House security clearances to his attempted efforts to fire Mueller during his 22-month probe. Alright, so what's a subpoena? Well, a subpoena is a legally enforceable demand for documents, data, or witness testimony. Huh, you don't generally get such simple definitions on this show. Let me take a second to enjoy it. Legally enforceable though, that's the part that needs some clarification. Our story begins back in 1928 when the Senate issued one of their early subpoenas. In an unfortunate trial run, this also became the first subpoena to be completely ignored. Off to a great start, you guys. This case went to the Supreme Court after Congress ordered the Deputy Sergeant at Arms to arrest the man for contempt of Congress, and nobody was really sure whether they could do that or not. When the government's arresting people for legally questionable reasons, generally a good time to sit them down and have an intervention. This led to the McCrain v. Daughtry decision, which was an incredibly sweeping pro-subpoena power decision. First, it said that each House of Congress has the power to compel a private individual to appear before it and give testimony to exercise a legislative function. This basically means, hey, we're making laws here and we need the testimony of someone who did the bad thing so we can figure out how to make the bad thing illegal. It went further to say it's not a valid objection to such an investigation that it might disclose wrongdoing or crime by a public officer. So basically, a politician can't object to someone testifying because <clears throat> they have some dirt on me. Makes sense. Interestingly enough, this presumption would later restrict the court's hand in clear cases of congressional overreaching while investigating communists after World War II. Yeah, we brought you in here because you're a communist, and we just happen to be writing some anti-communist laws. While you're here, you wouldn't happen to recognize any of these officials, would you? While Hoover's FBI worked behind the scenes, Congress expanded its own high-profile investigations, often ignoring the civil rights of the accused. Yeah, not a great time for sweeping subpoena power. This period finally saw a cap be put on what Congress could ask with the Supreme Court case of Watkins v. United States. This addressed the legitimate witch hunt of the House of Un-American Affairs Subcommittee, where a former communist Watkins was sentenced to a year in jail for refusing to name names after he was subpoenaed. He argued that naming names was not a part of the committee's investigation and ultimately the Supreme Court agreed with him saying Congress has no general authority to expose the private affairs of individuals without justifications in terms of the functions of Congress. And no inquiry is an end in itself. It must be related to, and in furtherance of, a legitimate task of Congress. This brings us to the other major historical subpoena case. Congressman, the president in a six-page letter today says, don't ask anymore because he's just not going to give you anything. What's going to be the reaction of the committee? The President of the United States has told the Judiciary Committee, the House of Representatives, and the American people to go to hell. Oh yeah, the time Nixon said he wouldn't comply with any subpoenas. Worked out just great when he tried it. Right off the bat, if you're anything like me, you're thinking the Senate tried to subpoena the President's White House tapes as part of an investigation. That doesn't sound very legislative. 
Ah, uh, hey Nixon, we're making a law preventing presidents from doing illegal things. We know you have a tape of you doing illegal things. Listening to that would really help inform our understanding of how we write this bill. In reality though, Senator Ted Kennedy created a Senate resolution to investigate campaign activities related to the presidential election of 1972. The Senate voted unanimously to create the select committee and the resolution empowered the committee to subpoena witnesses and materials. This committee subpoenaed Nixon's mixtapes, and Nixon tried his hand at saying no. Specifically, he claimed executive privilege. The committee said, Nixon, check your privilege, and it went to the Supreme Court. Did not go well for Nixon. I've just informed Judge Sirica that President Nixon will comply in all respects with the order of this court as modified by the Court of Appeals. The relevant takeaway is that the Supreme Court looked at the claims to protect these tapes and said that neither the doctrine of separation of powers nor a blanket claim of executive privilege can be used to circumvent these subpoenas. Now there were parts of these tapes that were more censored than an Eminem song on Radio Disney, but that was to protect the legitimate executive privilege claims pertaining to military and diplomatic affairs. Now there was one final presidential subpoena with Bill Clinton, but he just showed up and testified. And I kind of have trouble imagining Bill Clinton turning down an invitation to anything. Because he didn't fight it, we don't have a precedent setting Supreme Court case. He did categorically lie under oath when he got there though. So you know, not the perfect blueprint for success. Baby steps. So that's the precedent. Now let's do the fun part and actually apply it, because what is going on right now? In this episode, I'm going to focus on the main thing that the news is talking about. House Democrats are threatening to subpoena Attorney General William Barr if he refuses to testify this week. Okay, so under whose authority is it okay to subpoena William Barr? Well, the House Judiciary Committee is seeking this testimony for justice, which is in the committee's name, so woohoo! Well, this is where an interesting problem comes up, because the Supreme Court has said that there must be a link between the information and a legitimate task of Congress, like weighing whether a new law is needed. Lawmakers cannot use the subpoena power and expose private affairs simply to aggrandize investigators or punish a target. You know, kind of like calling up communists and making them name names. So what laws are we trying to pass with this subpoena? With the subpoenaing of Trump's financial records, the House Oversight Committee is saying that they need it to look into creating new laws against foreign financing. But with Barr, this all gets a little more confusing, because the House Judiciary Committee wants him to investigate Trump. Now you're probably saying right now, but, but, but Nixon! We subpoenaed him in an investigation. And prepare yourself, because this next sentence makes everything fall into place, or at least it did for me. Remember just like a second ago when I said that the Supreme Court said that there must be a link between the information and a legitimate task of Congress? Well, Congress has more than one task it can do. The Watergate congressional investigators, however, had a card that the current Congress lacks, as the 1974's committee subpoena for President Richard Nixon's tapes was part of an impeachment inquiry of the president. Oh yes, Congress's other task, impeachment. When an impeachment inquiry begins, Congress gets to put on their detective cap and go full anti-Trump. Until that point though, the investigators have to, legally speaking, revolve around acts or bills that they're trying to pass. This of course feeds into the core of these subpoena debates. But we're fighting all the subpoenas. Look, these aren't like impartial people. The Democrats are trying to win 2020. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi says Congress has the constitutional responsibility of oversight and she denies the investigations are purely political. Yeah, they're not purely political, just 20%. This brings us to the core question of this debate. If you're not trying to investigate Trump, why are you, legally speaking, trying to subpoena Attorney General Barr? Well, like everything nowadays, this revolves around the Mueller report. I know it was already released, but they want a copy of the Mueller report that's uncensored, uncut, and unrated. 
Barnes refused to turn over the report, saying specifically the committee has not articulated any legitimate legislative purpose for its request for all of the special counsel's investigative files. Yeah, for this one, Democrats literally didn't even fake a legislative reason for needing the unredacted reports. Come on, at least say you're writing an election security law or something. So from everything we've talked about so far, kind of feels like checkmate for Barr. Democrats have responded though. So far, only a redacted version has been made available. Now the committee chairman said that he could not accept a version that leaves most of Congress in the dark. He's saying that the attorney general went a little sharpie crazy there and blocked out all the good parts. It's like watching Wolf of Wall Street on basic cable. Huh. I didn't know this movie was only 30 minutes long and about a guy who works hard and makes good financial investments. Of course, the problem here for oversight is the attorney general has pretty wide authority in what to censor and what to show. So it's going to be hard to make the argument that he illegally didn't disclose enough information, but rather obnoxiously didn't disclose information. Barr is looking at this and saying, I did more than the legal minimum here. First, I wrote an entire four-page book report about it. Sure, I cribbed most of that from Trump's Twitter feed, but I did it. Then I released the parts that I thought the public should see. You can exercise justice on the executive branch based on what the executive branch wants you to see. You have to meet me seven-eighths of the way here on this one. This brings us to the next part, steps, of which there are a few options of how to pursue this. First, you could find Barr in contempt, which led to this incredibly awkward Nancy Pelosi moment. It just isn't jail? true. Should he go to jail for it? it, 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 it. There's a process involved here, and as I said, I'll say it again, and how many other questions you may have, the committee will act upon um, the, how we will proceed. Well, I'm confident. Yes, this outcome would, in theory, end in Barr going to jail because of a charge of criminal contempt of Congress. Now that might sound extreme because, wow, trying to throw an attorney general in jail for ignoring a subpoena? That is a silent coup level of instability. We would never do that nowadays. This hour, the Republican-led House of Representatives has voted to hold the Attorney General of the United States, Eric Holder, in criminal contempt of Congress. Never mind. It happened in 2014 with Obama's Attorney General, Eric Holder. You see, Holder had refused to turn over documents to the House Oversight and Government Reform Committee that they had subpoenaed as a part of an investigation into the botched gun-running investigation. Nothing suspicious sounding there, folks. The judge on this case ruled that Attorney General Holder was not in contempt of court and simultaneously ruled that he had to turn over any non-privileged documents. So that's the criminal contempt of court route that they're probably going to take. The second option is you could, and see if you can immediately find the glaring problems with this idea, report the person in contempt of court to the Justice Department. Who heads the Justice Department again? Right. Now in theory, there's nothing wrong here, but if I'm going to go after Steve Jobs, my first stop is not going to be the genius bar. The final option is, well, something we haven't done in almost a century, call in the federales. Remember that Supreme Court case from the 20s that we talked about at the top of this episode? Some people are asking, will Congress go the inherent contempt route and order the House Sergeant at Arms to begin arresting people? a step that hasn't been taken since 1935. Now this would take bigger balls than anyone in Congress currently has, and you bet this would go straight to the courts again. So that's probably not going to happen. So wow, a lot to digest in this episode. Sorry I went so long, but whew, subpoenas are complicated. Now to the final question. What did we learn, Palmer? Yeah, what did we learn? Because my mind is mush just reading the script that I wrote. Subpoenas are complicated. Who knew? Generally, these things get settled out of court. You guys can look at this paper, but we're going to hold on to the B-tape. Deal? But this is turning into a legal battle, and the legal lifeline of these subpoenas will be whether you can convince a judge that you're trying to fulfill the functions of a lawmaker 
or you're investigating Trump. Or of course you could just put the Mentos into this political diet coke can, start impeachment hearings, and then just go hog wild with anti-Trump investigations. It's been recognized that if you're going to impeach a president, you probably need all the information you can get. Thank you and oh boy finally that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, sorry I've been a little off posting this last week, but I just moved into a new apartment. Like my new view? I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to learn more about that Nixon Supreme Court case, I did an episode where I went over it in detail. If you want to learn more about the fight for Trump's tax returns, I did an episode specifically about that as well. Remember to subscribe and give me a thumbs up if you like what you saw. Lastly, as always, thank you for watching.